Hello, my name is Bhavin Shah and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Portworks by Pure Storage. In this Lightboard video, we are going to talk about how uh, data scientists and AI developers can use open source tools like Kubeflow to build machine learning pipelines and perform experimentation and hyperparameter tuning for the models that they're building on top of Kubernetes. So uh, we'll have a couple of personas in this uh, video for the discussion in this video. We'll have the platform team that will be responsible for building our Kubernetes cluster, the infrastructure underneath it, and also configuring an object storage repository like a pure flash blade to store all of our raw data. So we have already configured flash blade. We have stored our raw data. We have our Kubernetes cluster with nodes and port works already installed in it. And in this video, we are just going to talk about how data scientists can use the tools that they are already familiar with to build these machine learning pipelines. So, uh, if you if you take a quick poll uh, around data, uh, uh, if you take a quick poll and ask data scientists what's the, their favorite tool of choice, most of them will say Jupyter Labs or Jupyter Notebooks. But one common issue they have is finding the right amount of resources that they need to run their Jupyter Notebooks because their notebooks can be used for data curation, model training, model validation, etc. One way to solve this inside your on-prem data center or in, inside your cloud accounts is by deploying a Kubernetes cluster and deploying an open source tool called Kubeflow. The whole purpose of Kubeflow is to make sure ML pipelines are scalable and are available uh, to data scientists on a self-service basis. So as a data scientist, once my platform team has deployed the Kubernetes cluster and installed Kubeflow for me, I can just access the Kubeflow UI. Again, that doesn't need any additional skill set and request for a Jupyter Notebook. In the request form, I can specify how many compute resources I need. This can include things like CPU, memory, even GPU resources, and how much storage I need for that specific stage of the pipeline. So as part of the Jupyter Notebook, I can define a pipeline which includes things like my data curation phase, my model training, and then I can run a model test or validation phase as well. And whenever I will deploy a Jupyter Notebook inside using the Kubeflow UI, since it's running on Kubernetes, it automatically deploys a Kubernetes pod, which is backed by a persistent volume claim, which is backed by Portworx. So the data scientist doesn't have to open up tickets to get access to resources. All of this process is automated by because of the way Kubeflow, Kubernetes, and Portworx work together. Data scientists can choose to deploy new uh, persistent volumes or new data volumes uh, to store their curated data sets or to store their model checkpoints or use a scratch space, or they can also use existing persistent volumes that are configured in a read write many uh, access mode from Portworks so that they can use the, the curated data set that a different data scientist from the same team has already done. So somebody has done the work already, I would just want to use that as a starting point instead of starting from scratch. By using read write volu uh, many volumes from Portworks, it allows me to do that. Next, using Jupyter Notebooks, I can create an entire machine learning pipeline using Python code. And as part of that Python code, I can use uh, S3 APIs to get my raw data from my flash blade bucket. So that can be step one. But then uh, for any of the future steps, like the uh, actually curating that data or creating my data set from all of the raw data that I just imported, to training my model and storing those checkpoints, to validating my model against the test data set that I have, all of this can run inside Kubernetes. So we can use data on Kubernetes to store information that I need for the rest of the pipeline. So if I'm running this on AWS, which is what a lot of organizations are doing right now, I don't have to go back to my S3 bucket and pay for ingress or egress costs whenever I want to import data, export data in uh, into my Kubernetes cluster where my actual uh, training jobs are actually uh, are running or my machine learning pipelines are running. So once I, I have a pipeline, I can use the Kubeflow UI to create a pipeline object and that, that pipeline object can be shared across my, my team of data scientists or AI engineers as well. To perform or to run experiments, Kubeflow allows us to just 
uh, tune the hyper parameters to what I want for that specific test. And it allows me to run an experiment. And at the end, I can monitor what the output or the model accuracy looks like. I can monitor the logs for each step in this pipeline process by accessing uh, just from the Kubeflow UI. Uh, so let's see what this uh, pipeline workflow actually looks like, right? As soon as I trigger a pipeline run, uh, each phase in this pipeline will correspond to a Kubernetes pod. So I'll have a pod for the data curation phase, which is bringing in or importing the data, the raw data set from my pure flash plate bucket or any S3 bucket that I'm storing my raw data in. And then I'm storing it in a read write many persistent volume. So once that's done, a second pod, once my data curation phase is done, I move on to the model training phase, which is where a second pod gets spun up. And this pod, instead of having to import the data again, the curated data set again from my S3 bucket, can just point to the read write many volume that's already uh, that already exists on my Kubernetes cluster. Once that's done, I can either use the same volume or I can spin up a new read write many volume to store my model checkpoints or this can be a read write once volume as well. And then finally, once my model training is done, I can run my validation and this again corresponds to a Kubernetes pod which can access the same uh, volume or it create it can create a new volume. All of these phases can, can uh, since they are running on Kubernetes, don't need specific infrastructure resources to be provisioned beforehand before any experiments can be run because of the all uh, because of all the automation that's built into these projects, open source projects and uh, uh, solutions like Portworx, things become really easy for data scientists uh, and they can accelerate the the space with which they are building building out their models. What are some of the benefits of using tools like Kubeflow and solutions like Portworx for building these machine learning pipelines, right? So let's talk about some benefits. The biggest benefits that we saw were self-service. So like data scientists don't have to worry about opening up tickets. Uh, the dynamic volume provisioning that Portworx brings to the table. And again, this doesn't have to be like this. Whenever Portworx provisions a volume, it automatically follows the policies that are set by administrators. So you don't, the administrators don't have to worry about going back and modifying some things uh, uh, on an individual volume level. Because these model training jobs are longer running jobs, uh, we also want to make sure our infrastructure is resilient to failures. So if a node goes down or if uh, uh, anything happens, like if two nodes can't communicate over the network with each other, Portworx has replicas that are spread across the Kubernetes cluster. So even if you lose a node, your model can pick up the training process from the last or previous checkpoint that it had stored in that persistent volume and it's ready to go. So model checkpoints, uh, the easy availability of read write many volumes. And so instead of having to uh, install different plugins or install different storage backends for read write once or read write many, you can just use Portworx as that a single solution that can offer both of these protocol access for your data scientists. Again, data scientists don't have to learn how any of these things work. These are just offered by the platform team as a service. So this is how organizations are and should be building their machine learning pipelines using Kubernetes and Portworx. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.